Hi, welcome to Programming with Mesh. In this session, we will get acquainted with React Navigation, which is used for routing and transition between screens. And in this part, we use Stack Navigator to switch between screens, so that it gives us the feeling of working with screens in Android and iOS. In the previous session, we learned how to create and use custom components. And with it, we were able to create a button and header component to our liking. In mobile apps, pages pile up, and it's like filling a stack. So whenever we leave the current page, we see the previous page. For example, if we open a screen A first, and then a screen B, in fact, a screen A still exists and has just gone backwards. So if we exit a screen B by pressing the back button, we will see a screen A again. To use this feature in React Native, we use React Navigation. First, we go to its website, and copy the installation command from the docs section. We enter it in the terminal to be installed. React Navigation is made up of some core utilities, and those are then used by navigators to create the navigation structure in our app. Now, depending on whether we created the project with Expo or with React Native CLI, we copy the command to install the dependencies related to React Navigation. So now to use the Stack Navigator, we go to this section and copy the installation command to enter in the project. Well, now we delete the items from this page that we don't need. I create the app function and to use navigation, I use the navigation container component inside. Make sure this component is imported from React Navigation slash native. The navigation container is responsible for managing our app state and linking our top-level navigator to the app environment. The container takes care of platform-specific integration and provides various useful functionality. Deep link integration with the linking prop, notify state change for screen tracking and state persistence, handle system back button on Android by using the back handler API from React Native. Now we need to wrap the whole app in navigation container. First, I define a const to create a stack inside it. We need to import this function from React Navigation slash stack. Now from the stack we created, we create a navigator and we create a screen inside it. For this screen, I consider a name, for example, a screen A, which represents the first page. Now we need to specify a component for it to make the screen elements. I create a component inside this file. Its name may differ from the name we chose for the screen. I take the page to simple to just figure out which screen we are on. We use this function as the screen component. Now run the app to see the result. Well, as you can see, the app ran with a screen called a screen A. I style the component we created to make it look better.
Well, now I copy this function to use it as a second screen. I call it a screen B. In Navigator, I create another screen and change its name and component to a screen B. Now I create a button below the text of a screen A to go to the second page by touching it. To do this, I use the pressable component. I define a style for it to be a separate button. Now in OnPress, we define a function for it that takes us to a screen B. In order to use the navigation feature inside the components, we have to consider the navigation prop as its input argument. Now we use the navigate function and inside it, we use the name of the desired screen. As you can see, we enter the screen B by touching the button. And because a screen A is behind it, by pressing the back button on the header, we return to the previous screen. The back button on the header only appears when there is a screen to go back to. Now on a screen B below the text, I create a button to work similar to the back button on the header. I copy the previous button and use it. Similar to the previous component, we create an onPress handler function and this time we navigate to a screen A. In fact, because a screen A is before a screen B, a screen B exits the stack. We can do this in another way. The go back function actually does the same thing as the back button on the header. If we use the replace function instead of navigate, the current screen will be replaced by the desired screen and will exit the stack itself. So there is no more back button on the header because a screen B is the only item inside the stack. And if I touch this button, it will give us an error because it's not possible to return to the previous screen. Well, I will return the button to the same state and refresh it so that we have both screens. This header is created by default with the screen we created. If we want, we can delete it from each screen separately. To do this, we use options prop. We did this for a screen A, and a screen B should still display the header. As you can see, there is no header on a screen A, but there is on a screen B. We can also do this once for all screens. To do this, we must use the screen options prop in Navigator. As you can see, the header has been removed from all screens. So there we go. We learned how to work with Stack Navigator in React Navigation. So in the next video, we will talk about other uses of React Navigation. Now, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next session.